Hello and welcome to the Cooks and Crate Farms YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be doing a full garden tour and uh, talking about our bean netting, kind of how it works and how it compares to the normal method of using cattle panels or wooden lattice to string the beans up. Now I'm going to start over here. You'll notice at the end of each row we actually have uh, marigolds planted. These kind of ward off bugs and attract pollinators. We just planted them at the end of every row. Didn't plant them all throughout. Some people like to plant them all throughout to help ward off bugs and uh, attract pollinators evenly throughout. But the first two rows of plastic, which by the way we do plant, how we do uh, all of our garden, plant on uh, just regular plastic instead of planting on like a, like I know back to Eden Gardening they use a lot of bark and wood chips. We just plant on plastic. We find it a lot easier than using a permaculture or back to Eden beds. But uh, this is, this is, all, where all the squash comes uh, that is sold at the, our market down in Donville, Georgia. And uh, the next two rows that I'm going to be talking about is our, uh, these are cucumbers. The, these have kind of reached, kind of finished their cycle. We're probably going to be pulling these out in two or three days, but I'll very quickly show you how we strung these up. Uh, we just, we did like we do our tomatoes, but instead of just one row all the way throughout, we did two rows. We did one post here, then we did one post on the other side. And how this works is we just do plant all of our uh, cucumbers in a single row down the middle. And as they grow, we just kind of like fold them over onto the uh, string. And uh, it, it really does help the cucumbers. See, most of the time you'd end up with uh, stuff like this. We do get these occasionally, but when we were growing them on the ground, you'd end up with, uh, they grow in the holes that we plant in in the plastic. And then they'd be, you know, yellow in some spots and green in the other. Um, where they'd have disease or spot or big molded spots on them. But what putting them up like this does is uh, they can actually grow down and they, you don't end up with uh, so many of these or the big ones that are have a, you know, like straight all the way down and then a big bulb at the end of them. So it, uh, it kind of improves the quality but also keeps them from a uh, disease. Well, like I said, this cucumber patch probably won't be here for much longer. Probably gonna rip it out in the next day or two and uh, plant new along in the middles. So uh, this is kind of the end of its cycle. Over here is the, our uh, second row of squash. This is kind of mixed in with some zucchini and some uh, spaghetti squash down on the end. Um, so we got zucchini up here, and then we got uh, mostly squash in through here, just regular gooseneck squash. We got some straight squash, and then over there we have some spaghetti squash. Um, over here is our first row of peppers. Again, we have the marigolds on the end. But right here are our bell peppers. We have planted a different kinds of peppers all throughout these rows. I think this row is just solid bell peppers all the way up. But over here, we have some jalapeno peppers and some cayennes and sweet bells. We also have in through here some multicolored cayenne peppers. I know we have a purple, an orange, a red, and a yellow. Um, here are purple cayenne peppers. I don't know if they've been put in a larger yeah, so you can see the little purple cayenne peppers in there. These are no different than normal cayenne peppers other than the fact that they're purple. It's, the the color is really the only thing that's been changed in these. But uh, they're still just knotty. You can see along the stalk, the stalk is also purple. Leaves are green just like the others. And they also have uh, purple blooms. So you can kind of see in there the purple bloom. All right, so moving on to our next row. Again, we have the marigolds planted on the end. But here we have some bush goliaths, or some uh, bush blue ribbons. I'm not sure which one these are, but we do have some uh, goliaths in here. But this is, this, we've only strung them up by one string in there. Um, this is a much shorter plant, so it doesn't really need the two strings. Over here, we just tied to the one post and continued with two strings. And through here, I believe these are the uh, goliaths. They got some real big tomatoes on them. Just turning yellow. So that's the first row of tomatoes. You can see it's it's real short out through here, and then you get onto the goliaths, and it gets a lot taller. In here, we have our normal tomatoes that we grow. These are the, uh, I think these are the same as what we grow in the greenhouse. We just grew these outdoor. It kind of makes it easier to pick. Moving on to the next row, these are lima beans. They got some, as you can see, they've already got some pods on them growing. Um... Then in the next row, here's where I'm going to talk about our netting. So over here we have white half runners with uh, Cherokee greasy beans down on the other end. Uh, and this is put on the same 
lattice you can see in there it's same thing they just they run up it and it it really does hold them it makes it much easier to pick than cattle panels because in cattle panels a lot of the time you'll have just big clumps uh, attaching to each wire with this they tend to spread out a lot more evenly there's not a lot of uh, you know big clumps of vines um, one thing that is much much better than cattle panels on these is with cattle panels when they when they okay so at the end of the season these beans will just dry up and essentially turn to dust with cattle panels you have to work them off you have to sometimes shake the cattle panels oh some people just go ahead and uh, burn the cattle panels to get all the extra leaf dried up leaf off of it but what we do is at the end of the season we just come through and we cut right about here and then we just pull it off the post and then we just roll it up and it sandwiches all of the uh, dead beans in between it and it really makes it so much easier to clean up after a uh, season uh, down here on these other end on the these other couple rows thinking here we have some more tomatoes these are real young and uh, more tomatoes over here um, in these beds really not sure what what's planted here there's some little things maybe cucumbers yeah in this row we have cucumbers planted and then uh, these next next two rows there's nothing planted and then down here we have some okra so we have some okra plants growing and then over here this is just uh, extra flowers what we planted they don't really serve much of a purpose but to kind of look pretty for the roadside and uh but that about sums it up that is the entire garden tour and my uh and the entire explanation of why we do the netting compared to the wooden lattice or the cattle panel if you enjoyed the video don't forget to leave a like and subscribe we do try to post every saturday and wednesday hopefully we can get back in the swing of our upload schedule um so for the past few months it's been really busy i haven't had a lot of time to go out and record videos so one of the next series that i want to do i want to do a series on this greenhouse right here this long one see that's the end of the short one and then that's the long one um so that houses all of our indoor green in all of our indoor tomatoes all of our greenhouse tomatoes and uh right now what we're going to be doing is pulling those out they've run their course and it's time to plant a new uh, generation of tomatoes so once those, once the second generation of tomatoes have run out, we're going to start doing winter lettuce, which this is the first year that we've done winter lettuce in a long, long time. So uh, kind of excited to see how that turns out. But until the next video, bye for now.